good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our Thursday talk. As you can see, I'm alone today. Uh, Ella had a uh, family responsibility. She's out with her family. Uh, let's see, Dan's mom and dad are here. Her other grandparents are here. So the family's uh, going up for some special events today. So she will not be with us. I did say, if you can, Ella, get your mommy's phone and uh, FaceTime me. And then uh, I'll, put, I'll hold the phone up like that and show everyone that you can say hello. But anyway, we'll see if she has time to do that. But anyway, uh, good afternoon. Welcome. Let's see, uh, Tony and Eva and Gail and Michael and whoever else is on. Uh, Sandy, good to see you. Yes, so um, we're going to go to the Lord today. Um, if you saw my Facebook page, I see Sandy had mentioned it already. Um, we have a wonderful couple from our church from Massachusetts that uh, relocated to Florida about two years ago and uh, to be with uh, her daughter and uh, her family and other family members. I uh, had a call this morning that um, June's grandson, Lincoln, uh, was found unresponsive in a pool. He's two years old. And uh, basically what happened was, if I understand the story, he basically died, but they revived him quickly. She pulled him out and she did CPR or whatever. Then the medics came and they, they did what they do. But they're concerned because of what's called secondary drowning. I never heard of that before, but it does make sense. Uh, after someone is revived like that, you know, because they lost oxygen in the brain and, and, and the blood cells through the body, Sometimes there's residual damage, and that's what they're afraid of for this little boy. Uh, so we must pray. I, I sent out an email with the details. Uh, I didn't know uh, how much to put on Facebook. And uh, so um, if, you, if you want information, write down your email address. I'll make sure I mail it to you uh, after we get off of here. But um, I wanted to share a couple of scriptures um, Jack and I were talking about, uh, oh, where's that paper? The various scriptures uh, regarding prison ministry. I hope to get to that later, if I can locate it now. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so, oh, let's start with Psalm number 46. Let me pray first. I'm going to be reading from Psalm 46. Dear Father, Lord, we come before you today. Lord, we do pray without a doubt. We pray. For little Lincoln down in uh, the Tampa area, down in Florida. We pray for divine healing and strength for this little boy. Let him recover 100% without any residual effect of, uh, of his uh, plight, uh, losing oxygen. Touch him, strengthen him, bless him, O oh God. We, we call upon your name, the name of Jesus Christ, to minister your life-giving touch upon this young boy's body upon his mom and grandmom and other family members that are just so distraught right now. Touch them all in the name of Jesus. Be with the medical team, be with the doctors and nurses and any specialists that they're calling in to, to help. Uh, give them great knowledge and wisdom and faith uh, to do the right thing to help this boy uh, bounce back 100%. Lord, bless our time on Thursday Talk today. We invite your Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and it's in your name that we pray. Amen and amen. All right, you can hit your share button. We may pick up a few extras. I did already. Uh, but Psalm 46, this is one of my favorite psalms. Um, I remember early on in, in my Christian life, uh, I would love to, uh, to read this and meditate on it. Uh, hey, Christine Mitnick, good to see you. Um, all right, so Christine, Tony, Michael, Gail, Eva, and Sandy, all right? There may be a few others that, that could not comment right now. So, but Psalm 46 says, and, and, and I wonder how many of you remember, we used to sing this all the time at church. God is our refuge. God is our strength, a very present help in times of trouble. That's why it's so important to have a daily even hourly, even minute by minute walk with God. Uh, he's a very present help in time of trouble. Uh, this happened this morning uh, with our sister June. And uh, she called me kind of early. I mean, not that early, maybe 930 or so. I'm not sure when it happened, but 
I, I just got finished reading an article, a news article about a little boy in Lowell uh, that they found had drowned, I think this morning as well, or, or yesterday. A little three-year-old boy had wandered away from uh, his daycare program. And in the, in the blink of an eye, the boy was gone. And, and uh, yeah, so just, and then she called. Uh, so, hey, James, hey, James Carter, uh, check your email. I sent out some more details about that. Hey, uh, Pamela, good to see you here too. But anyway, Psalm 46, God is our refuge and God is our strength, a very present help in trouble. Uh, last week, we heard about another drowning, the six-year-old boy uh, was out uh, near uh, under the 95 bridge uh, going over the waterway uh, into uh, Newburyport. The family was on a little island out there. And, and I know for a fact that the current in, that, in the Merrimack River as it meets the ocean is really horrific. Um, and, and the boy was on the island, but he reached over to do something and he slipped and fell in and the current took him away. Uh, the mother dove in to try to rescue him. Uh, she rescued the daughter and, and she was rescued. She was in trouble, but she later died at the hospital. The little boy also died. And just a tragic situation. If you have lo little ones, even, even older people, a few years ago, some of you may remember that I, I was in trouble at uh, Plum Island in Newburyport with um, my two of my granddaughters, Ava and Ella. We were swimming, having a great time, and we got caught up in a riptide out there that, uh, gee, just um, by the grace of God, we were able to swim through it and get to land. I'm, I'm telling you, I didn't want the girls to know I was really uh, shaken by it, and we talked about it afterwards, but uh, boy, the water current is very tricky. But anyway, God is our refuge. God is our strength. A very present help in trouble. Hey, Mom, how you doing? Good to see you. My mom's here from Rye, New York. Uh, Mom, I'll be calling you afterwards just to say hi again. Um, so God is our refuge. A refuge is a place to go to that's protected. Like, um, think of a, like a bird refuge. You know, they have these bird sanctuaries that are set up where no one could interfere with the natural habitat. But God is our refuge. God is our place of safety and comfort. God is our strength. Uh, God is the source of our strength. If we can only trust him and yield to his authority, and God is our very present help in times of trouble. Present help, that means right now. And certainly that family down in Florida needs God's help right now. Uh, let me let me read on a little bit. It says, therefore, we will not fear. Now, you know, in the midst of a crisis, there may be a little fear or anxiety. It's only natural. But we cast all our fear, fear, all our anxiety upon the Lord. Even though the earth will be moved, um, the mountains will be carried into the midst of the sea. That sounds like a earthquake or some natural calamity. Something's going to happen. Uh, we won't fear because God is our refuge. God is our strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. Um, then it goes on, though its waters roar and, and are troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. Uh, and as the chorus, the song that we sang, it would always go back to, for God is our refuge, God is our help, uh, our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Hey, Lorinda, good to see you. Um, if you're joining in a little bit late, um, I had shared uh, on Facebook this morning uh, one of our dear members of our church that relocated to Florida uh, has a little grandson, two-year-old boy, uh, that was found unresponsive in the swimming pool. And uh, she, the grandma, and uh, other the medics came quickly. They revived the boy, I think with CPR and uh, brought him to the hospital and he was breathing actually he breathed and coughed up water but uh, they're concerned about um, secondary drowning never heard of that before makes sense that um, when someone is revived after they're basically they they drowned they, they were deceased but they were brought back but sometimes there's a loss of oxygen and uh, that has residual effects 
So we're going to be praying for this little boy. His name is Lincoln. And, uh, but we're sharing from Psalm 46 that God is our refuge, that God is our strength, the very present help in time of trouble. It goes on to say, There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. Now this is, uh, is, it, is it hyperbole? Is it metaphor? I forget the literary term. Uh, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. But there's a river whose stream shall make glad Jerusalem. The river, of course, is the Holy Spirit that brings in life and hope and power and anointing. Um, God is in the midst of her, in the midst of the, the tabernacle in Jerusalem. Uh, she shall not be moved or shaken. God will help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. But the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Um, you know, the God of Jacob, let me just make a comment about the God of Jacob, because sometimes the, the Lord is referred to as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And uh, each person has a different, you know, experience with the Lord. The God of Abraham uh, Abraham was the one who was called. He's the father of the faith, strong, mighty man of God. Uh, Isaac was Abraham's son. He was the one who was delivered. Uh, remember when Abraham took him to the mountain and the Lord told him to sacrifice his son, but Isaac represents Christ. So Isaac would be, um, the God of Isaac is the one who brings deliverance. The God of Abraham is the one who brings power and, and direction. The God of Jacob, now Jacob was the one that was uh, uh, his, 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 the meaning of his name is supplanter. He's the one who stole the birthright, remember? From his brother Esau. We talked about this last night in our Wednesday night Bible study. But um, the God of Jacob is the God that ministers to people, much like you and I, that may have had some struggles or did some things that weren't right, but God has been faithful in spite of our failures. And uh, so we're, it's interesting that this says the God of Jacob is our refuge. So I like to think of the God of Jacob as the God of we New Testament believers uh, that have come to a place in our lives where we have surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus. Uh, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Uh, Pamela mentioned, uh, she remembers when my mom uh, touched or uh, reached out and grabbed our son Jeffrey when he was in a little pool of water. Uh, he was about two years old. She jumped up really quick and grabbed him out of the pool and uh, basically saved his life. That could have been a tragic situation too. So anyway, let's go to the Lord before I, I talk anymore. I'm going to pray for this little boy, Lincoln, for a, a miraculous healing and blessing in his life. So please join me right now. If you can, put everything aside. Just focus in on the prayer time. Join me by agreeing with me in prayer. Wherever you are, you could be saying, yes, amen, yes, Lord, etc. Uh, so let's go. Father, Lord, we want to lift up to you this little boy, Lincoln, today. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, um, you said in your word that you are a refuge, you're a strength, you're an ever-present help in times of trouble. Lord, certainly this little boy is in a time of trouble. We pray for his mom, for his grandma, for his grandpa, for other relatives that are down there. Everyone's so worried. We pray that you would comfort their hearts, give them grace, give them peace, give them faith, oh God. But Lord, for little Lincoln himself, we pray that he'll be getting the oxygen through his body, through his brain, in his blood, uh, that he'll be getting um, all the water out of his lungs. We pray that any, any loss of oxygen would not cause any at brain damage or physical damage in the way he uh, moves or talks or uh, uses his hands or his feet or his limbs. We pray, Lord, that he would be restored 100% to good health. We pray for your anointing to be upon the doctors, the uh, medical team, the different people, different specialists that are involved down in that Tampa hospital. Uh, we pray, Lord, that... Uh, that little Lincoln would be responding well to all the treatments he's getting. Uh, so, Lord, thank you for, for June giving us a call today. Lord, she's so worried, and, and rightfully so. We, we just pray that you would strengthen her and Harry right now, her daughter, um, 
Um, Deirdre, I think it is. I forget right now. Anyway, pray for her daughter, Lord. Bless her, strengthen her, encourage them. But let little Lincoln, Lord, know without a shadow of a doubt that you, oh God, you are with, uh, you are with them. A uh, Danielle, it is. We pray, Lord, you just touch the family, touch Lincoln, uh, Lord. Let his let his heart be working properly. Let the oxygen combination of in his blood work well. Let it replenish the cells that were potentially damaged when uh, when he was unresponsive. Um, let his fingers and hands and feet and toes and arms and legs move properly. Uh, let his brain function be 100%. Lord, breathe your life into him in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for a miracle, Lord. We pray that we'll get a report that everything is perfectly 100% okay. So Lord, please uh, touch him. We're standing on your word that you are our refuge. You are our help and our uh, present help in time of trouble. You are our strength. And we pray, Lord, that the river of God, the Holy Spirit, would begin to move in that situation, move in that young boy's life, uh, move uh, through the medical team working with him, move through the family. And Lord, let this event cause many to turn to you for salvation and for help as well. So we thank you for this, Lord. We give you the praise. Your word says to pray with thanksgiving. So we're gonna thank you, Lord, for hearing us. Thank you for moving on our behalf. Thank you for touching this little boy in a positive way. In Jesus' precious holy name, we do pray. Amen and amen and amen. All righty. All right, thank you, Sandy, for that. All right, so um, if uh, I, I sent out an email to those that are on the church email list, so if... If you're not on the list and you want to be on the list, let me know. I'll make sure I send you the email with some of those details. Anyway, um, 1218, I just want to share two scriptures. Uh, one is in Isaiah 61. Uh, this is a, a prophetic passage, if you want to turn there, Isaiah 61. Um, and uh, let's see. The Lord is speaking to Isaiah to speak to the children of Israel, but Isaiah 61, this is the same passage that Jesus quoted from in Luke chapter 4. So one, first of all, let's read Isaiah 61, verses 1, 2, and 3. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because, he, because the Lord has anointed me, to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prisons to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion or Jerusalem, um, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. So there's something about the message of Christ. This is a messianic uh, passage. The message of Christ is that Jesus is coming uh, to bring good news. The gospel means good news. Um, and he will, among other things, I like this last part, he will console those who mourn, M-O-U-R-N. Uh, he will give them beauty for ashes. Ashes was a sign of, you know, um, prayer, supplication, humility before God. They would put ashes on their head and just kind of bow down. But he would give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Uh, again, we used to sing this all the time too, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lift up your hands to the Lord. Um, pray in the spirit and with understanding, uh, etc. 
But anyway, so this is a prophetic, prophetic word. Uh, so that they may be called, the people may be called trees of righteousness. I wonder, can you say today that you are a tree of righteousness? You're a planting of the Lord, and through your life, he may be glorified. In other words, uh, Jesus has come, the Messiah has come, uh, to change the course of our lives and the direction of our lives. So here's this story in Luke chapter 4. I just want to keep an eye on the time, make sure I don't go over time. But Luke chapter 4 begins with uh, the temptation of Jesus. Did you know that Jesus was tempted uh, three times, it's mentioned, in this one chapter? It's also mentioned in Matthew and Mark. Um, but Jesus was tempted by the devil. And each time, uh, the, Jesus refuted the attack by quoting scriptures that Satan used scripture, but Jesus quoted the scripture appropriately uh, and counteracted the attack of the enemy. We could learn a lot from that. But Jesus was tempted for 40 days. Now, interestingly, um, let's see. He was led by the Lord. Uh, let, me, let me make sure I got this right. So Jesus was baptized in water, and then he was led by the Spirit to go 40 days uh, into the wilderness. And during that time he was in the wilderness, he was tempted by the Lord. And after he was tempted and victorious, uh, he returned in power uh, of the Spirit to Galilee, and news spread about him all over the area. And he began to teach in their synagogues and was glorified by all. So he was baptized in water by John, led into the desert to be tempted. He overcame the temptations. It was like a test just to make sure. And then he, he came back to Galilee and started his teaching and preaching ministry. Well, he came to Nazareth. That's what I want to get to. Luke 4, 16. He then came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And he turned to Isaiah 63, 1, 2, and 3. And Jesus quoted Isaiah. Now, this was all customary. Uh, people would, would be called upon in the synagogue to turn into the Old Testament scrolls and read a passage of Scripture. There was nothing unusual about that. What was unusual was what happened as he was reading this. So he, he turns to this passage. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, the spirit of the Lord, has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, he doesn't say the whole passage that we got into before, but... Uh, he stops right there. Then it says, He closed the book and gave it to the attendant and sat down. Normally, when a person would do that, they would have a little discourse or a little dialogue about what the, like a little sermon at, about what the passage meant. But he sat down, he closed the book, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. In the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed upon him. Like, Okay, Jesus of Nazareth, what do you have to say? And then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. In other words, today, Isaiah 61, 1, 2, and 3, is fulfilled in me. I am the one God the Father and, and God the Spirit has sent to proclaim good news. I'm the one. Today, this scripture is fulfilled. So, listen, all bore witness to him. They, they all agreed. And they marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? Like, they couldn't believe such gr grand things were being said. And, but it was bearing witness with their spirit that this was yes and amen. But then they started this question. Wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Isn't this Joseph's son? 
And he said, Jesus said to them, you will surely say this proverb to me, physician, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in your own country or your own city. Then he said, Assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was not a great famine, and there was a great famine throughout all the land. But none of them was, uh, n none of them, but to none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath in the regions of Sidon. To a woman who was a widow and many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet and none of them were cleansed except Naaman and the Syrian or Naaman the Syrian so all in the synagogue when they heard these things they were filled with wrath and they rose up to thrust him out of the city and they led him to the brow of the hill on which their city was built that they might throw him down over the cliff then passing through the midst of them he went his way. What happened was they initially had this conviction that Jesus was the Messiah, but then they started thinking about it and they said, how could he be the Messiah? He's Joseph's son. And Jesus gave them Old Testament examples from Elijah. Um, yeah, Elijah the prophet, when he was ministering, um, uh, none of the people came to testify of him. Only one did, Zarephath. And then later, um, um, as Elisha, Elisha was, Elisha and Elijah, Elisha was ministering, none of them were healed or cleansed except for uh, Naaman, the one who was healed of leprosy. In other words, their ministry was, 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 was true and right, but not many people received it. And Jesus is saying, in the same manner, I've come, I'm the one, and I know that not many of you are going to receive it. When they heard all that, they realized Jesus was calling them out. They got angry. They rose up to seize him and throw him off the cliff, but he escaped from the, the midst of them. It wasn't his time yet. So isn't it ironic that the one who has come to give the most help uh, encounters the most grief? I mean, we started out in, a, in Psalm uh, 46 that God is our refuge and our help who wouldn't come running to God in our time of trouble who wouldn't turn to Jesus who said he came to fulfill that prophecy I'm the one that's preaching good news to the poor to the brokenhearted to those in trouble to those in prison to those that are sad to those that are distraught I've come to give life so that your lives may become like a tree of righteousness that bears good fruit. Who wouldn't want to receive that? Well, there are people that still don't want to receive that. But anyway, we have received that and we believe that he is the Messiah and he is the one that gives help in our times of trouble. Okay, we're going to pray one more time. Um, we have nine people on here, so hello everyone. Uh, if, you want, if you want our email, please uh, send me your email address right under comments. I'll do it after we get off of here. But anyway, our, our focus today is to pray for a little boy. His name is Lincoln, and uh, he's the grandson of, a, of family members of our church that moved to Florida about two years ago. Uh, he, was, he drowned, he was revived, he was breathing and on his own and doing well. The doctors are concerned that he may have secondary drowning, which are the residual effects of having lost oxygen for a br brief period. So as we pray for Lincoln, one more time, we're going to pray for the family in Lowell. And we're going to pray for that family that lost their son and wife uh, in, in Newburyport. I think they were from Amesbury. I'm not sure, but I know the Lord knows that one. So let's pray one more time. Thank you, Lorinda. Let's pray one more time. Can we do that? Father, Lord, you are our refuge. You are our strength. You are our present help in times of trouble. Lord, Isaiah quoted it and, and proclaimed it. You, 
reiterated the, the words that you are the one to fulfill that prophecy, that you are the one that has come to give hope and help and life to those that are sick and poor and distraught and hurting and downcast and troubled and in prison and all these terrible things. You, you said today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And Lord, you proclaim yourself right then as Messiah. We believe it. We, we receive it. We accept it. And so, Lord God, we come before you in the name of Messiah, in the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus the Anointed. We pray for Lincoln, again, for healing and strength and deliverance uh, from, the, uh, from the sickbed. Let him, let him jump out of that hospital. Let him be perfectly fine without any residual effects from the, near, the drowning or near drowning that he experienced. Thank you that June was there and others that revived him and brought him back to life. But Lord, we understand there's still trouble ahead. Uh, and so we pray for a clean bill of health. Let him get the, the help he needs. But may your hand be on this little boy to, to bring healing and strength to his body, his brain, his soul, and his spirit. And uh, let it always be a testimony of your faithfulness upon the family. We pray, Lord, for the family in Lowell that lost a little boy, I think it was this morning, little three-year-old boy drowned in a pond. We pray, Lord, your, 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 your helper to come, an ever-present help in time of trouble. Help this family, help the daycare workers that are so grieved. Help them, just comfort them, and Lord, bring hope into the situation. Lord, for the family that lost their little boy and the wife uh, in Newburyport uh, last week, we pray for the father, the husband, the other children, other family members that are grieving, comfort their hearts in the name and authority of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I also remember right now our dear friends David and Carol Ritchie, who many years ago now, probably, hmm, probably 20 years ago, when their little girl Rebecca was in a pool, uh, she was under the water and, and she was unresponsive. Thank you, Lord. You put it on David's heart to look for her. He dove down and got her, brought her back and worked on her. She came back to life. She was almost gone. And Lord, now Rebecca uh, is a student at Asbury Theological Seminary, having graduated from North Point, and go, going on to get her master's degree, maybe her PhD. But Lord, thank you for saving her life back then and giving her parents hope and, and, and answering prayers at that time. We pray, Lord, for the same situation for little Lincoln. Let this event uh, set him on a course of living for you 100% when he realizes it was God that saved his life. Bless his mom and his family, his grandmom and all the family members. Bless them all for your, for your sake and for your glory. So we thank you, Lord. I pray your blessing over everyone else here today. Uh, anyone that may be going through something, Lord, bless them, uh, meet their need, provide for them, and we give you thanks and we give you praise now. In Jesus' name we pray. All righty. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us. Uh, hopefully I'm going to hear from Ella pretty soon, but Ella sends her love and regards. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Have a great week. I'll leave some music on for a minute. All right. Jesus loves you. Bye-bye.